Hello! Exactly. Perfect timing. Springtails, hell yeah. Isopods and springtails. Oh, I need to get more. I just had to basically throw out, not really throw out, but cult put in a cultivate, cultivation, uh, my uh, bioactive snake enclosure because she just currently is not happy. I put her in a new one, she's happy now, um, but she wasn't previously with her old cage, and so letting her deal with her issues, and then once her new enclosure comes in, brand new fancy one that's like four feet by two feet long, uh, then uh, I'll make that bioactive. But currently, I have them in a little thingy. Hello! Oh my gosh, hello, Apocalyptic Bee! It's so nice to see you! Hello, Tiger Kitty. Yeah, I was talking about Yuki. She upset with me, right? <laughs> Narissa, by the way. Oh, Amethyst and Narissa. Got it. Sounds good to me. It might be. That's what I. W that's what my vet was thinking. She's also like a finally um uh mature, sexually mature enough to breed. So she, I, my vet's also like, she may just be also hormonal. And I'm like, ah, great. <laughs> so she's, she's fine. I love her so much. <laughs> That's okay. Yuki's currently on a six week uh, food strike. So I believe in you. Give, uh, give a Haku about a week, and he should hopefully turn around, but uh, that's at least what my vet always recommends, because like, I just changed Yuki's cage, so I have to give her a week to process. So just give uh, Haku a week to process the whole move, because ball pythons really don't like to be moved around. Two more days and it'll be two weeks! Oh, poor boy. Hopefully, hopefully. Um, but it definitely, if you don't, uh, if he still doesn't eat, just keep a, a huge eye on his weight. Like, Yuki is still chunky. So, I changed those eaters. Oh my god! That is impressive. I mean, that's good. I don't really know the care of tarantulas. I respect them as a spe as a uh, animal and a creature that exists, but... I will never touch an old one, but they're really cool. Um, yeah. I really don't know the health of a tarantula. I, mean, I can't really give advice on that one. Ball pythons, I'm pretty well researched. I have had Yuki for almost three years now. She is a, the same thing as Apocalypse Bees, uh, a limnistic ball python, so it's white with blue eyes, and she's gorgeous and hormonal. She'll be fine. Hello, welcome! The dwarf species, awesome, that sounds cool. White snake buds, we need to really do art together with us, just our characters talking and like holding our snakes. Yuki is now three foot seven. I got her weighed at the vet. Not weighed, I got her measured at the vet. She is three foot seven. Like, my goodness. <laughs> Yeah, Yuki went to the vet because I was worried. Same. But I like that it was just a white snake. You don't really see those anymore. And plus, I like Japanese culture. Awesome. I'm also really working with Yuki to not be as head shy because... I had to put some ointment on her nose because whenever she roughed around in her cage, she rubbed her nose really bad. It's not horrible. He said it'll go away with one shed, but it's still annoying to me. That's good. That's good. Yeah, we will get started around five. Still waiting for everyone to join. And one to actually join the, uh, who's messaging me? The actual chat server. 
Ah, uh, there we go. <laughs> I posted uh, a lovely meme in my D and D channel on Elden Ring with some mushroom armor. It was like mushroom dance, mushroom dance. <laughs> We're gonna paint my room and then make a nice big boy enclosure. That way we don't have to deal with it moving around. True. Yes. Do that. Um. Yuki's currently living in a tub setup, which is. It is good. They like there's no issues with a tub setup, but I don't personally like them. I like having to look at my little tiny forest enclosure um, that looked really nice and gorgeous, and now I have to look at this just tub sitting in my living room. <laughs> like there's a snake in there. Do you see it? I should sure don't. Let me open up the lid. <laughs> but I added some uh, coconut husk, and it's been really doing well with the humidity so much so as I've had the lid open all day and keeping her eye open an eye open on her she hasn't moved at all but trying to get the humidity out of there and get it back to like 50 to 60 percent because she is not gonna like all that high humidity hello Nimbus welcome yeah one of my buddies was a um a pied ball python really wants to breed his boy with uh, Yuki, but I'm like, currently she's upset, so no. Oh yeah, a lot of people don't think that. Like, there's nothing wrong against having a reptile in, like, a tub set up. Like, they can have everything that they need in there. I'm just not a big fan of them pers for myself, because I just like looking at a beautiful aquarium. Hello, welcome Bradley. It's nice to see you all. I'm so excited for this today. Cause we're not just gonna go after a whole bunch on uh Hello Drax! Ah, oh, it's nice to see you too. Um, we're not gonna do huge on anatomy today. We're mainly just going after like little stylistic choices, fun additives to do to your duchies, and just things to make them unique. Which I think is really fun to do. Um, yeah, if you, uh, I could, see, I could actually send you some. Coconut husk is actually really cheap where I live. I think my brick that filled up like a, that fills up like an, um, a two gallon bucket. Like, that's what I used. Hello, Shizuka! Yeah. Um, but it was like $5, and you just fill that with water, and it expands, and it's really cool. <laughs> We're caught talking about our snakes and our stuff, and all that. Oh, stuff. nice! Yeah! Yes, but you have to be careful with doing, like, getting that from actual, uh like garden places because they can have some chemicals or pesticides and stuff like that in it that's dangerous to reptiles. It's better to like go to a uh, reptile shop because they will make sure it's not treated with anything like that. Alright everyone, as much as I want to continue talking about reptiles because I could do that all day, we are doing duchy stuff. Got yeah, Chewy's amazing. I highly recommend Chewy. Um, I miss Wednesday stream. Will it be available on YouTube or something? Yes, it also is currently a VOD on my Twitch channel that you can always use. Um, I need to see how I can like transfer my Twitch streams onto YouTube here soon before it goes away in 14 days. Um, but yes, the VOD is currently on my profile that you can watch. We will go over some basics like what everyone missed in the beginning, like right now. But yeah. Alright, so, today we are focusing on just detail work and things you can do to just make your duchies pop, that's really fun, but we will start with just a basic full body, just to give a quick tutorial for people who miss Wednesday, Wednesday stream, um, to, uh, 
give them just a quick run around on like what you miss and some tips and tricks on drawing duchies. So again, I do a circle for the head and then cross hatch to kind of point in the direction where I'm going to put my eyes and my face. I will lower the opacity for that and with my other layer, layer, I will do small triangle with like curved edges to start off with my eyes. And then from there, I will slowly be working out where I'm going to put my muzzle. Add your smile. And then your bottom muzzle, your chin. And then using the guideline of your circle, fill out where you're going to put your cheeks. Add your little details like nostrils, what the other side of your head is. Your brow line. Now, ears. Kind of again, more triangles. And then outstretch, stretch that lobe. And then little ear, little ear tufts to connect with your dutchy cheek. The back ear. And then your neck. Adding more fluff when needed. And then your eyes. That is a basic, well, also the ear fluff. Can't forget that. And then your basic, just duchy head. So, now going back to our lower um, opacity la layer, we're gonna go and fill this in and start adding our body. So, again with lines, just kinda flushing out shapes. where we're gonna put everything circle for where we're gonna put our arm and our shoulder joints. Fill up where we're gonna put our hips and our legs. And then our legs. Again, using a lot of curved lines in this, nothing particularly straight. Mark out where we're going to put our knee. Again. Knee. Okay, now slowly fill out where we're going to put our legs and our foot on our feet. Remember, if you don't like any shapes or if it looks a little bit wonky, just look at the bigger picture and then slowly edit and shrink down what you like and don't like. So right here, we're going to bring in our pits of our arm. Again, working with ovals with one side just a little bit bigger on the other side. Bring in our elbow. There's that one arm. Again, using curved lines, we are going to make our paws. Oops. Arm. Then for our 
other paw, just a triangle on the side. circles right here for our bottom paws just to make sure we line those out okay and if you like a general shape like how I do right here again that opacity and then we're gonna go up with our top layer and we're just gonna add details so fluff wherever you want it again this is still a sketch so no need to get too technical with it it's in your line art where you really perfect it Currently, we're just making sure we have our solid shapes that we 100% like. And just preparing our sketch for our line work. cramping <laughs> I've been drying all day <laughs> I probably shouldn't have done that make sure they're basically placed where we want them.
and just adding those layers of bubbles. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then with this, just go underneath and then erase what you don't need anymore. Higher the opacity of the bottom layer. And there you go! That is basically... That is the full body right there, ready for line art and just some fun additions. Now, Shizuka, do you want to roughly go over what you discussed last session? Uh, sure, I could. Awesome. I will pull your stream up whenever you have it up. Oh, yeah. Oh, my outdoor kitty said hello. Gotta get you pulled up. And then. Let me do this this way. No, not what I want to cancel. Um, <laughs> there's a way I could do a pop out. There we go. That's better because then I don't have to show all my Discord channels that I have. <laughs> <laughs> I have so many. There we go. It's all set up for you. Yep. So, uh, last time I drew one full body image in the center. I briefly went over some of the shapes that make up the the body. The way it's like got a curve along the back and the bottom belly, kind of like a canine, but a little bit smoother. Also very highly based off of a horse, but it's got some differences in certain places, such as the four legs are more like a maned wolf. And the hind legs are horse uh, legs all the way up till that final ankle or the felt lock, and then they turn into paws. And then I kind of went over how I did wings and how the structure of the wings works and how you can draw the wings in a some sort of as realistically as possible. How the wing feathers overlap each other as the wing uh, will fold in on itself and then finally it'll fold over itself causing the el the wing feathers on the arm to cover over top of the hand feathers when it's folded and closed over like that like what you see in birds I went over how the ears can swivel forward and you can give them all kinds of like realistic details such as the inner ear fur and like the specific shape of the ear to give it that long like diamond shape and how the duchies have a sort of a canine jaw set but it's very strongly based off the horse jaw set where in terms of the uh, spacing where it's got a large gap between the front teeth and the back teeth then a little bit of how they have uh, their necks are more flexible sideways and up and down similar to a horse and how their paws, they have semi-retractable claws, so you can base their, the shape of their paws off of cheetah paws. They have webbed toes. And you just, in the last little bit about how the feathers on the tail and also butt feathers will overlap from back to the front. And I think that's probably sufficient for an overview. Good to me. All right, so today we're basically gonna go over just extras that you can add to your duchies um, just for funsies. I heard a lot of you really want like additives for your tails, um, some fun ideas for that. Um, so I guess we'll just start with that. And I'm gonna shrink this dude down. So we could just use him later. There's no one here. Okay, he's right here. There we go. Awesome. So today, I'm going to use my symmetry tool, my symmetry ruler, because I can, and I have it. <laughs> if you guys don't have this, this is fine. Uh, 
You don't need a symmetry ruler to do all this. This is just something I like using because it just makes things a lot easier. So we are going to start with basically just a top view of a tail. And we'll do like long end of tails. Here. We will start with the basic, the longer uh, tail. I should move this more up, actually. My first position was actually probably really good. So we'll start with the basic, just tail feathers. Tail feathers can be drawn so many, so many ways. Um, I agree with that emoji. <laughs> yes, definitely. Feel free to. Have fun! So, bottom tails, you can draw their feathers so many ways. The most common way I know of is this. The sort of like somewhat diamond shape. With like some feathers overlapping. Make sure you start with your bottom two and then just continue to fan out. But you can do fun little additives like going here towards the middle and just adding little feathers to like just the base. On the like streamline, like flight. Or some fun things. This is like somewhat like a my the, my brain is thinking sparrow tail, the one where it has like the little split. But I might be wrong. fun little feathers like this. I like always adding a second layer of feathers, but that's just me. You can just have the single or the double. And then just fluff at the ends. Those are always fun. Or, I'm just going to keep it on this one. You can just have some fun little extras. Like very long and fluffy, like showy feathers. They don't have to be curved like this, I'm just curving them because I have literally this tail at the bottom of my canvas. But you can have fun little, adding some fun little details like that. You could also add butt feathers, which is my personal favorite. I love those. And where you will start at your base of your tail, you can just start slowly adding some more feathers with this. Again, I like adding a second layer of them. You can do something like that. I'm gonna shrink, not shrink. Lower the opacity for this, really show off the feathers. And even for just the butt feathers, you can add some fun, just wavy little side feathers to add just some extra special flair to it. Another fun style of butt feathers that I like, which is ones I actually have for my own duchy, is this kind of like V style. This is how I like drawing them. Again, adding those second layer of feathering, which is nice. You 
can also just add some large fluff to the end of your tail instead of just having feathers. Or you can do both, like I have for my own. You can just go absolutely crazy with it. After all, these are all just fantasy dragons. Like, just go nuts with it, and as long as it makes you happy, that's all you need. Yep. And just another fun, just add little side feathers. Little fun, crazy tails. Now, nub tails are fun. I enjoy nub tails. Because not a lot of people use them. I feel they're a little bit underrated. You could just have a basic nub. Which there's nothing wrong with that. You can add like deer spots and stuff like that. Like I have for Jingle, my own little Arctic themed duchy. But you can add feathers to that. Which is just always fun. And you don't even have to like... Yeah, you may have a smaller space to work with, but it's always fun just to see those little extras. Or you can really have fun with it. And just put them on the sides. Like resting on top. one part of your duchy, like, you can do so much with just, like, one little bit to really, like, personalize and customize something to represent you. You can do semi-aquatic as well. Where I don't know how I'm gonna put this with the symmetry tool. Let me turn that off. So symmetry tool is turning it off. We're gonna do a side view where you could have your tail. a crocodile or an alligator. There's so many fun little ideas you could do. I'm gonna go ahead and move this little guy over here. I 
Oh, turn my mic up? Got it. Uh, what if it's already at max? <laughs> <laughs> Let me see what I could do. That is a very good question. I could turn on the music. Does that work? Because the music I can turn down. Let me look at my settings. Inputs. Headphones anywhere. My microphone. I know the problem. I don't know why it does this. Uh. Go back. Sound. Go back. There we go. That should do it. It was on my Oculus Rift, which it's not even plugged in. But I can also turn up the volume. So that should be louder. If it's too loud, let me know. And I can turn myself down. Just a smudge, am I still? How about that? <laughs> Sorry if I'm a bit loud. I'm trying my best. I would just turn them much better. Awesome. Okay. Thank you for keeping an eye on that. I don't want to blow out anyone's eardrums. <laughs> okay. But with that, that I was big worry about. <laughs> All right. All right, back to what I was doing. Tails, just fun things to add for tails. You can add just fluff. I forgot to turn back on my symmetry tool. Yay. Some fun little mains. And you can just have this go all the way down. That's what I like to do. And then they can have some surprise spikes in the fluff. Because why not? Some more just fun feathers. And I'm actually gonna do a fun little fantail feather set in the back of this set. So your ideas of what you can do just with tails alone are just limitless. Like, you can even just like look at like real life animals and just see what they have. Like looking at their wings, tail feathers, um, even like fish. Like I've even taken some inspirations from fish. Reptiles. Heck, even the Monster Manual D and D highly recommend it. They've got some crazy stuff there, like something fun that I'm going to turn off my symmetry tool again for. That I just thought of that I think would be fun, and may have also because I fought one of these recently. We're gonna go over here. We're gonna 
Turn that off. You can have a gelatinous cube tail. <laughs> Just have... A blob tail that can have like a bone, a skull in there. Sword sticking out. Fun, just a little bone. And with this, is basically how you would make sure it looks like jelly. It's just how you shade it. Don't ever shade with black, but I'm doing it for this because... Lazy. <laughs> There's a lot you can do with the G designs because you can combine any amount of, like, feathers, fluff, spikes, fins, and then props. Even any other bio organic material you can think of. Yeah. Like, I just put a sword through this cube <laughs> tail. This just jelly tail. Yep. Do you want to talk about what you're working on right now? Um, well, I did just start on a little bit of a thing, but I was kind of like. just showcasing a little bit of the sort of features you can add to a duchy's face, but definitely just goes into the whole of how like there's probably no end to what you can do to customize your duchy with like fluff spikes feathers very very change true change up the shape but these are just some ideas that are pretty popular yeah like fluff on the ears the feathers I like how you do have feathers uh, thanks really nice yeah, a lot of duchy have like this uh crest of feathers that goes down the middle of their neck. They can also have manes, like a horse. A lot of, like, dragon characters have this pair of big horns that can be shaped however you want them to be. Mm -hmm. Then there's the classic telephone, telephone set of facial spikes. True. Like the little uh, curing horns in the center, eyebrow spikes, cheek spikes, you can have spikes down the neck, you can have that little rhinoceros spike. You can make it a big rhinoceros spike. <laughs> exactly. You can have teeth poking out, you can have fluff, you can add more fluff to the ears, add more fluff to the ears, add more fluff to the ears. <laughs> Just have fun. The lion mane. Yeah. Yes. I love it. So it's all about just like, what do you want to do? It's a lot of fun. It just stores its collection and it's- Oh my god, that would be so funny. Now I really want to like, draw a gelatinous cube inspired duchy. It's just jelly and it just stores its stuff and its tail and body. Oh no! <laughs> I love and hate this idea. It's like hugging Gumi the Pokemon, or Gudra. <laughs> uh, but there's no end to like what you could do we're gonna draw a f we're gonna do a symmetry face and then we are gonna... Let me just... I'm gonna turn that off. I'm gonna add all of those into just a folder. So I can... Lessen the amount of stuff that is on my layer... Section. No, we're gonna leave that there. Okay. There we go. Much better. Just organizing. Alright. 
So we're gonna do a fun symmetry face, just so that we can do some fun little design ideas for faces as well. Again, if you guys have a symmetry tool, use it. It's amazing. You're not cheating. If you don't have one, just draw one side of your duchy to copy-paste. It's so nice to have. If you're doing traditional, uh, you're really good and I'm impressed. <laughs> You know what? I'm not gonna add the ears, because ears can be fun just extras. So here is our basic Dutch head that we're gonna work with. And we are just going to have fun just doing fun little detail extras. So we're going to start with ears. to make them long and somewhat floppy then add oh, I love those squinty ears <laughs> tufts long and floppy ears are real cute do something like that and then you can add your horns layer up. Now normally when I do my head feathers I will tend to turn off my symmetry tool because it just sometimes won't look right if I have it on. So there's a fun little idea there. Then we're going to turn the symmetry tool back on. So with this one, I kind of want to go Benangora. So a lot of fluff, a lot of fur. We're going to kind of round out the ears a bit.
some fun little just kind of pigtails from the amount of ear fluff they have. That's super cute. Yeah. There we go, little soft, little fluffy thing. Good recommendations. I will toss them in as well. Line of Action is a great website for learning how to draw from reference and studying, definitely. Outside the scope of the stream, but do you have any recommendations for someone in, who is interested in learning to draw? i.e. resources, courses, tools, and encouragement, and etc. Um... Good question. I want to do streams like this more often. Um, I am just tend to be busy, so I'm thinking like every other week possibly doing one stream where I will do just my streams being drawing lessons because it's just things I like to do. Just this week we were mainly focused on duchies. But from a few times we will do other stuff. For recommendations out for outside like this though, that's a good question. I did a lot of YouTube. I'm very visual on learning, so I watched a bunch of tutorials on like how to shade different um techniques like using the program I use clip uh, clip studio paint I definitely used uh, watched a bunch of tutorials on how to properly use this and even just having friends to uh, who are also artists help take a, take a look at a uh, your anatomy and like your work if you need any another a fresh set of eyes to look at it like I can't rem I I can remember the amount of times of me sending something to Shizuka and be like, this doesn't look right, How? what's wrong? <laughs> and she'll overline it and correct it for me and be like, this is it. I'm like, oh, thank you. <laughs> I would have an example, but that art piece is currently dead in my computer. Unfortunately. <laughs> Hopefully I will get that one out. I think I actually, it's in our chat logs. Let me go see if I can find it. Ah. Uh... Minus. Oh, got it, got it. Okay. Um, da 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 da. There it is. Uh. Oh. Open original. Copy image. So this is what uh, I'm gonna do a new canvas. Paste. 
So this is a piece that I sent to Shizuka, um, where it was just like my line sketches and me somewhat already underlining it. And... And fortunately I've lost this. Hopefully one day I can go back to it. There we go. Um... And I really generally love the anatomy and stuff for this already. Um, do is make her look like the Grinch. Oh no. Well, I can help you with that. I've got Whisper's ref sheet. Like Whisper the admin Whisper or like your own duchy Whisper. But anyway, um, I was not liking how this le wing laid. I kept redrawing it and redrawing it and I was like really frustrated with it. So I sent it to Suzuka. And having like an overlay is really nice because you can at least physically look and see oh this is how it's actually supposed to look. And this is what Shizuka came in and put to fix. And you can already see just from her small overlay how much better that wing looks. So there's something fun. Admin Whisper. Got it. So what were you having trouble with? I could possibly do a small sketch for you and show you. File... no, not undo. File new. And then file open. I think I have her reference sheet in here somewhere. Ignore the large amount of dubs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's gotta be around here somewhere. Da, 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 da. Here, I'll just take it from the Facebook group. Haha! Give me your reference sheet. Paste. There we go. All right. Exactly. The whole Lorn light, snoot, eyes, everything. Got it. So you know what? We're gonna take our full body that we were working with right here. We're just gonna minus that, that. And then we will, I will show you guys how I do my line arts. Oh, well, let me just first turn off the overlay and then we will go over here. I don't know what this was. What is that? That's that. Okay, we're gonna put that down there. You know what? We will go over here and we will do some line art. So, make you bigger. Because again, I like to work with larger canvases. So how I like doing my line art, again, make this small, not small, uh, just a lighter color. And then in black, and I use literally the basic pin. Um, I use the pin and the G pin. I don't do anything fancy. And I tend to stay on either 7 or 4 on the brush size. We're going to go on 7 right here. And using tablet, your pressure is everything to make those really nice lines. So you can either increase the pressure to like do that bit of a taper right there. And you can do it a little bit shrink and just continue forward. Eyelid, you're gonna make that a smaller pressure, so a smaller line. Your lid crease, and then right here. Hey, Brandon. Well, well, you're loud. You have a TV in your room. Well, or I'll turn it down. Try to not scream into the microphone, please. 
or you have a TV in your room, I did warn you about this. <laughs> you don't have to if you don't want to. I can move the computer into your room by the same logic. Huh. Anyway. Line art's a lot of just resetting and pin strokes. There's nothing wrong with clicking undo as many times as it takes until you get the hang of it or until you get something you like. Exactly. I have a very, very nice uh, undo button on my actual tablet. Lane aren't just basically taking your sketch and using it as guidelines and just making it look a bit smoother. Add more details as you go and just go with what you like. Another good thing to kind of remember is how the fur somewhat runs on actual animals. It tends to start from like the snoot and just gotta remember like where the direction of it is. Uh, so it normally like runs down, correct? Jessica's now having 
Dobbs is now having issues remembering. <laughs> yeah. It always, from, like, from the snoot, it just runs this way. Yeah. yeah. For horses, though, it's actually opposite. It uh, starts like around their forehead, kind of goes around in a circle like a swirl, and then it actually goes down their nose. Really? See, I never had horses, so... <laughs> yeah, it's just for that one spot that it's very different, that noticeably. Everywhere else, it's kind of the same. Huh. Of course, Dutchies only take a, like a base inspiration from horses, and they don't have to follow horse like specifics to the T. Yeah.
chão. Yeah, for me, clean iron line work is just basically just your pin control. <laughs> just slowly learning what your pin likes and what it doesn't. A lot of getting used to how your stabilizer works and how your program gets, how your program like how does it. Yeah. And then just learning what details and stuff that you just like and really fits you. Yeah. <gasps> it's a kitty. <laughs> yes, the kitty has all the advice. Yep. If you pet a cat, it'll make your line art better. If you're allergic to cats, uh, dog. If you're allergic <laughs> to both, uh, stuffed animal. Or a poodle. Unless you're allergic to hair in general, then I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, that's why. I was wondering why something was stinking and my dog, who has horrible gas, is sitting next to me. <laughs> I was like, what died? <laughs> How's the past couple days been for you, Shizuka? Uh, I think it's been pretty alright. That's good, that's good. Got it. Uh, let me finish these details hella quick and then I will go back to the head. Okay. Um, good question. Especially with how I've got my head, that's a very good question. So, we're gonna just minus that for a minute. So we just have our line art. It's not finished, but that's fine. <laughs> I tend to lower the opacity, and so we're just gonna do dubs as horns, because... No, we'll do the basic. Let's 
so I tend to just put put them like around like the brow and ear line. Um, I tend to just do something simple like that. Place them in that specific spot and then add fun little details. I know some people will even take it like a step further and add like shrink it and then add fur or go overlay with it. But this is what I like because I think it looks better. But that's just a stylistic choice on my end. But I tend to also work my heads with those horns, so since I didn't start with horns with this one, unfortunately, it kind of looks awkward. Yep, a lot of times I struggle with, like, drawing the anatomy of the head, but it doesn't actually have the space to make horns look comfortably placed. Yeah. I would assume that that actually probably goes into, like, the sketchy anatomy in general, where... Sometimes duchies with big horns might grow the, a slightly altered skull to fit their horns. Mm-hmm. It's like ram horns look fine on this head. But I also really like ram horns, so I have a lot of practice with them. Most of my dragonborn characters in D&D have them. It's fine. <laughs> Heck, even my tiefling has them. What's wrong with me? Nice. I'm gonna skip this song. Yeah, I think like for the that is not simpler in... styles, like just that like round base of the horn looks just fine. But if you want, you can overlap it with little bits of fur coming up in covering it like the grass at the edge of a sidewalk. Yeah. Sorry, going back to music that will not get me in trouble. <laughs> I guess that playlist went out. Oh shit, I should've put that somewhere else. Oh well. Where did I put that window? Haha, <laughs> there it is. Okay. But yeah. Go and just finish this line art real quick.
so that's basically how I do my line art, actually. It's all in just adding details. Anything else you guys want us to go over and cover? Yeah, we can do dutchy eyes. Here's a fun little side view. This is just basically how I do my eyes. For duchies or even just furry in general, they tend to just be sh different shaped triangles. Um, eyes are, ex are extremely expressionate. So it's good to learn how to draw them. Something I remember, some a past duchy that I don't think is active anymore, which is sad. Not everyone likes this, but I did. They had this like little forehead third eye, which I just found so cool. I don't remember the exact character, but I remember there being a duchy with that. I think its name was Milk. It's by Bouncy Ears, if I remember correctly. Thank you. 
My Linksy is slowly inching her way over here. Milk, yeah. So did I. I don't think they're active anymore, but it was an amazing duchy. And it really was just a fun idea, that third eye. But you can also have fun and do like multiple eyes, like monster eyes. She is. My cat is slowly like crawling around. Something fun just to add as a detail. Tears are always going to start at your edges of your eyes and then slowly fall down that way. Thank you. I did a lot of eye studies in college.
Yeah, I get that. Um, my expressions, I tend to show it mainly in my eyes and my brows. But your mouths also will help with that. Like for happy expressions, you kind of just want to raise everything up. You want like everything to like in your movement to drawing to kind of go up. Um, but for like sadness. Yeah, no, we'll do my similar shade of eye. For like sadness, you want to like kind of direct everything towards down. Thank you. 
You just want to like kind of keep your movement on your canvas the same. So we'll do an angry. So I'm going to scrunch up the face a bit. There we go. On sadness? Tear ducks would normally get edge of the ice. They'll always like run towards the edge of the ice. That's for all tears. And they normally meet down here towards the chin.
There we go. There's kind of like a perturb, just like what? Type like really. Really shy, I can do a shy. There we go. Any other expressions you guys would like?
scared or surprised, I can do that. This one's kind of sassy. There's a fun little scared. Now for surprised, because they're both different.
Fun little collage of faces. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can you hear him? I'm sorry. <laughs> Xander is very thirsty. <laughs> My German Shepherd wanted water. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. I really, really don't know how sensitive these headphones are. One day. One day I'll figure it out, or eventually my new PC will come in and back to my old headphones where everything must be on high just to hear me. <laughs> Whew! Okay. What else would you guys like to learn? Do not apologize for Taco. <laughs> I apologize for Taco. Can't stop me. <laughs> But yeah, for expressions, it's basically just using the eyes, the brows, your mouth, and even just your ears to express your, um, your feelings and stuff in your art. Even you can use the fur to help you out, like with Rage, where I made, uh, the hackles look a bit raised and the fur more, like, pointed. Still want to hear about like different kinds of eyes that Dutchies can have? Yeah. A little bit of a sort of showing some of the ones I've seen. Yeah. Let me just get my swap over. Here you go. It's on you right now. Yeah. So Dutchy eyes. They are also very, very open to just creativity. And I guess the starting eye that many people are familiar with is telephone's eyes, where they have like the black sclera and just the glowing white dot in the middle that uh, kind of represents either the pupil or both the pupil and the iris. And there's the very typical eye that we're all familiar with, with the white sclera and colored iris and a black pupil. Sometimes you can combine it with like the glowing dot in the middle. Like Whisper has. Like the, yeah, you could give it like a white pupil, for example, and you can, Dutchies can definitely have glowing eyes. You could do all sorts of creative stuff with them. Give them slit pupils like a cat, or give them the ability to transform their pupils from like slits to ovals. Mm hmm. And there's, you can have like just everything is normal but black sclera. That's what my Dutchie Everin has. There's the horse eye where you can turn the pupil basically on its side and make it into like this little... Kind of looks like the opening of a bell. Yeah! Yeah, and Whisper has those. Does Not Whisper, Whisper have... Whisper, it's voodoo! Voodoo! <laughs> voodoo. Yeah. Hoodoo! Yeah. Voodoo! I was like, I thought of voodoo, but then I said the wrong word. I drew voodoo's headshots today, and unfortunately <laughs> things came up and she couldn't join. Hopefully next time, uh, though. Yeah. And then there's just, like, other examples of the different shapes of pupil you can put in. You can just kind of do pretty much anything with them. You I can like... give them Sharingan eyes from Naruto. Yes. I've seen a few of those. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love the Sharingan. 
How do you do your shading for your eyes? That's gorgeous. Uh, thanks. Well, something that I sort of do with my style lately is I have... This is something I kind of don't do much anymore, but I have like an overlay layer where I just put white and black, and the black is this little shading over top. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can... <gasps> Switch off a layer. Set this to normal to show what it is. That's the black layer. Uh huh. And then I set it to overlay. The white layer is shown here. Ooh. I just kind of make a little bit of a sheen, basically, give it some depth. <sighs> then for here, I just took a Lumi and Shade layer and I splattered co three colors that are basically all opposite each other on the color wheel. Mm -hmm. And I guess it kind of just like makes the, makes the eye look really colorful, like they live in a colorful world and it's all reflecting onto their eye. Maybe the green comes from something green nearby, the blue is the sky, the pink is just something interesting that they're looking at. I like, I like it. I like it. That's really cool. Thanks. Neat. Something fun that we have not discussed is shading. Oh yeah. Yeah, we can go over some shading. I can go to my full body that I've worked on. So we will start here. Um, where is that layer? There it is. Um, we're gonna move everything down. So what I like to do with shading is I like to use my little magic wand and I will outline everything and then invert it. So now I'm only coloring inside this base. Um, and I'll always normally do it under it. Uh, one thing to learn about shading, you never shade in black. That's just a big bad no-no unless like special circum circumstances, which I am not knowledgeable enough in art to know. <laughs> you in black and white, the color palette? <laughs> Basically. I mean, if we're going to be realistic, I'm colorblind, so everything is black and white. Oh. <laughs> what if I want to be edgy? Well, um, that's up to you. <laughs> I tend to use like an ashy purple and how I will shade. Yeah, there's it's definitely just a lot of ways to experiment with what looks a certain way. Exactly. Um, remember your directional of your light, so we're gonna have our light look going towards this way. And it's really just going around. I'll do my cell shading first before I even go in with, uh, what's it called, airbrushes. There's a TikTok somewhere that I watched where it was this guy painting and he shaded in all black and he was having fun making fun of the artist committee. I'm like, you know what? Good on you, dude. You shaded all in black and you made it look really good. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't shame you. <laughs> there are definitely art styles out there that can really utilize just black as a shading like tool. Definitely. This is just stuff that I've learned. Like Persona 5, for example. Mmm. I have told that game is amazing. I need <laughs> to play it. <laughs> yep, it's really good. Like, my cousins, they rave and t rant all about it, and me, I'm sitting here just like, mmm. Who is this? Who is this Joker dude? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Why is he so cool? <laughs> Bunch of teenagers being very shamelessly edgy, and it's great. <laughs> That's what I've been told. And I'm like, yes. After all, I did get the loving nickname Edge Paladin, so hell yeah. <laughs> uh, that will forever be my favorite nickname I have ever received. <laughs> it's just Edge Paladin. I was like, yes, this is what I want. Grown adult. <laughs> On the topic of D and D, unfortunately, I do have to leave for a session of D and D about now. So that's totally fine. I hope you have fun. Thank you. And it good was luck with the rest of the stream. Yeah, we've got like an hour left, and I definitely enjoyed having you on. Uh, I'll let you know if I plan any more if you want to join. And yeah. Okay. But this was a lot of fun. Enjoy and have fun in D and D, and don't start a riot. I did that. <laughs> Even though it worked out in our favor. <laughs> so was... Possibly no promises on the riot. Oh, that's Thank fine. Thank you. Yeah, have fun. Bye-bye. Goodbye. And now it's just me and you, chat. Hello. Dubs is alone. <laughs> I'm alone. You know what? Let's get this thing working. Um... It's gonna be an extra thing added, but since it is just me, I could put it up there. Where is it? Let's see if it's gonna load up in midstream. Oh my god, it is. Oh my gosh, it is. I'm just trying to be better. Oh no, did it not save my last? Oh, that's okay. I could just open a file. Haha, <laughs> it did save. Okay, so we're gonna... I'm gonna turn this one off. And we're gonna upload a new one. Writing overlays in midstream is going to be interesting. Is that not going to work? Just remove that. Come on. Uh oh, the thing is not one to work. Oh no. Are we still working? Hey Nimbus, you can still hear me. Please let me know because my my Oh, there it is. What is going on? Cool, cause my OBS may have crashed. Okay, now we got it working. Yes, let's move that. All right, we fixed that. We're gonna try again.
Where is this? Do, 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 do. You know what? We'll deal with what we got. I'll fix this another day. I was gonna do my fun little this thingy. This cute little thing that I got, but that's not gonna work today. Uh oh. Now we gotta move you. Now you're too big. That's alright, we can figure that out later. I don't know how to get it working today. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Ignore the void. I'm sorry. There we go. Now we got that fixed. Now the void is gone. Go away. OBS. What's wrong with you? OBS is being annoying. Well, I guess now that I have this window in front of my own window, it's fine. You guys can see just great. We'll just continue back to sh the shading. Look at the PNG model working another day. So how's the chat doing? I am pretty sure I made my roommate upset with me, but whatever. I warned him that I was streaming today. I think it's his job. I think he's just gripey coming home. I don't think he's mad at me specifically, but we'll find out whenever he comes home. Oh no, he's back. Everyone hide. Don't hide. It's fine. At least I thought he was back. I heard a door slam.
Oh no. Yeah, I have a four screen computer. <laughs> like my tablet is technically the fourth screen. Um, it's not mine, it is my amazing roommate so let's me use his while I am waiting for mine to still ship from Dell. But that's okay, it'll be here eventually. a pigeon. And then something I like to do is just going over certain parts of my shading with this soft eraser. Thank 
I'll just go back and wherever I wanted that darker and just refill it in. And there's a good like how I like my shading right there I'll add just something just to show you a color I'm gonna go with the brown just to show you how it looks There you go. And that's only a little bit of shading. That's not even the full detail that I like to go into. Um, another fun thing I like to do is I will, that's an eraser, not what I want, uh, I will go in with like street colors and mark out what I want on that and then we will go and grab a yellow. This makes for some really cool lighting. And then go and blend. Oops. This isn't even like an art technique that I at least know is an art technique. This is just me messing with digital art for so long. This is just something I like to do. And then... It's fun to just mess with a different little thing you can do with this. Oh, that's weird. Hard light, soft light. Oh, hello. Hello, Bigsby. Please do not. My phone's going off. <laughs> so that's something fun I like to do, and then I will lighten and brighten that how I like. Um... 
Ooh, that's weird. I'm gonna use that sometime. Hmm. Oh, that's cool! I like those colors! See, I don't really mess with these that often. But just adding different uh, light sources. Okay, color dodge is cool. Glow dodge, screen, lighten, subtract, linear burn, color burn. Color burn's what I normally use. And then I will just shrink and move it. And that adds like fun lighting to your little shades and stuff like that. And just some fun details I like to do. And then I will always go in with like a bright yellow. And I normally always use the soft uh, airbrush with this. And then how I add like my highlights. And just going to the edge of where your light is. And sometimes it helps if you already go and put in your glow so that you know where you have it and where you want to move it. Knowing how to shade your art is always a good thing to learn. Again with art, it's one of those where it's practice and you just keep learning as you go. You're always going to get upset and struggle with certain things. I'm not even, I don't even call myself perfect on things, I struggle with a lot of things.
And heck, if we want to go down a trip to memory lane to boost all your guys' to show you guys how I started, we can always do that. Or I can show you some of my beginnings drawing just duchies. <laughs> Gosh, there's so much old art that I have. Just kind of fleshing out, doing where I want my light. Oh no. <laughs> yes, you sure do. Oh, you heard nine? That might have been zero, actually. Yeah, zero's like at the window. Oi! Zero! What are you doing? Yeah? You wanna come talk? Yeah? Come here. Come on, you can jump up. What you doing, big boy? Sandra, go lay down. But yes, here's a zero. He likes to talk. Eh, true, true. I sure have, though. He's got a little bit of a... His meow tends to carry. And a little bit deeper than... Nines. Nines has a very female-sounding meow. Very high-pitched. You are shedding, my dude. Hi, Bubba. Yeah, you just want cuddles. I'm doing things, though. Oh, there's a German Shepherd. Hello, Xander. No, we can't do this today. Oi! Guys! Oh, all the animals want attention. I could look at this and I'm not even done with shading yet. I just did a little lighting and all that whenever I'm not even done. Uh, okay. What's the. Oh, yeah, all of them need it. Oh, that's cool. Nine, you have a friend. Not nine, zero, you have a friend. Where's nine? Zero, where's nine? Nine, nine! Oh, I see his ears. Hello, my sweet pretty boy. Wanna, do you want to say hello? Oh. Oh, come here. My soft, soft kitty. Oh, now all the cats are upset. They all want attention. Yes, I have your nine. What are you gonna do about it, Zero? Do not claw <laughs> my tablet. I will be upset with you. Well, Zero, you can't have nine always to yourself. I need his attention too. Yeah. 
Yes, hello. Hi, sweetie. You're so pretty. Yeah, you want to keep talking to everyone? Want to tell them how your day was? And how all you did was get in my way and trip and make me fall like twice while I was doing chores? No, you just want to sit on my tablet and be in the way? That sounds typical of you. Unfortunately for you, I'm still drawing. And I can work around your cuteness. You're sitting exactly where I need to sketch, dude. I have my thumb in your ribs. <laughs> You're so cute. Come on. I like that. Be a good boy. You're not... Dig your claws. Yes, I have two cats named after numbers. Uh, nine is special because his number is spelled in German. Zero is just zero, though. He's named after the dog from, uh... How... So, the one guy, the... Halloween dude. Jack Skellington, that's his name. NBC? The heck. Where did that come up? That's where it is. Nine bed before Christmas, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he's named after Zero the dog. Nine straight up was because I got nine, because my roommate uh, was really depressed, because my other roommate, when he left, originally took Zero with him because it was his cat. Uh, so we got him, I got him a sweet little flame point rag doll. And, uh,. That literally you can just pick up and will be like, yep, no, I want everything to do with you. And uh, he wanted to name him Nine. And I was like, I'm all about that. But if we name him a number, we're naming it like Nine. Like we're doing the spelling like German. And he's like, awesome. And so we did it that way. And then my ex roommate could not keep his cat and asked if I would take care of him for two years until. He broke his lease, and I was like, yeah. Because Zero wasn't a bad cat, he just is loud. Which is a whatever. So now I'm a three cat household. <laughs> Which is fine. I love cats, I don't really mind it. Oh, the other cat is Link, she's mine. She's a. Uh, a ragdoll, not a ragdoll doll, she is a Maine Coon Munchkin mix. So she looks just like a Maine Coon, but she's small. And she is the best bean and also the queen of the house. Uh, technically it is both, either the number nine or no. <laughs> so technically, yes, because he was a very rambunctious kitty and is still a rambunctious kitty. So much so, he's the reason why I had to get a new snake cage. Because he broke the first one and was just sitting there trying to play with her. And she was very upset with him. Both cat and snake are fine. She now uh, is in a tank set up and where he can't get her and she can't get him and they just kind of chill. 
does not mean he still sits on our cage and tries, but I normally get him off whenever he does. You are the chillest little dude right now. You're just sitting on my lap. Do not eat my tablet pen. No. <laughs> It's a good boy. Just watch me draw. <laughs> this cat also has a cat TV on my phone. Because whenever he's being too much of a brat, I will just set that up. And he will watch that for hours. Oh yeah. Uh, I was very, very upset when he did that. Like, I came home and I just smelled snake mus musk, and I was like, oh no, she's mad. What is she mad about? And I just see him laying in her cage. I'm like, what are you doing, you little white brat? Hello! Welcome back! I'm currently just showing everyone how I shade and do lighting. And then also talking about my cats that are wanting attention. I will have to take a photo after the stream of how Nine is just sitting on my lap while I draw this. Because he is just straight up chillin'. He occasionally tries to take my tablet, but tablet pen, but that's about it. You know what? I'm gonna take a photo of this while I can. Cause he may move. And he's really cute. Nine. Nine nine. Okay. I think I got at least a couple. Decent photos, yeah. Hi, Zero. Zero's upset, so... Oh, that's good. That's awesome. So, I have... Two very bonded, bonded, pe bonded cats. Uh, Zero and Nine are incredibly bonded. But the issue is... For Zero, is Nine loves me more than him. So I can call nine out of zero cuddling him and stop stop messing with my settings and uh, he will come for me immediately leaving zero all alone and upset and nine could not care as long as it's my attention that he's getting he does not care <laughs> at all at who he upsets about this um so it comes to some fun games that I like to play on poor, poor, poor Sweet Zero. Because he will scream at me and follow me throughout the house if I'm holding Nine. And I'm like, what, are you upset because I got your boyfriend? <laughs> and he will just come at me screaming <laughs> the whole way. <laughs> I'll have to record it next time I do it because he gets so upset. Yes, there you go. You can have your sweet, sweet nine back. Are you happy? I gave him back to you, so you leave me alone.
there I go. That's how I shade. Shade and do my lighting and everything. I hope that's useful. I hope you guys like that. Um, we're coming close to the last 10 minutes. Oh, thank you. Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. <laughs> oh, you didn't see. Look at all the expressions I gotta do. <laughs> I was asked to do a bunch of expressions, and then my favorite. <laughs> They're so cute. I really love them. I think my favorite is the what? Like this one. This one's definitely a favorite of mine. Yes, definitely. I'm just so busy right now. But honestly, clubs are nice because you could just take your time with them, which is great. But yes, we definitely should. Um. Yeah. Thank you. So this week we went over shading, some fun details, and added add-ons you can add to your Dutch Angel Dragons. Which was so much fun. Um, expressions, eyes, um, lighting. We went an overview again on how Dutch angel, angel dragon anatomy works and how to somewhat how to draw them and everything. Yeah, we sure have. Oh god, the dino duchess. One day I will make myself a spino. I love spinosaurus. Uh, and now that they like redid them technically and made them chunky, I'm like, yes. <laughs> um. But I do think this was a very fulfilling stream. This was really good. Um, next week I will be off. And I think the week before that I will also be gone because that's my first year anniversary with my boyfriend. Um, so maybe three weeks from now I'll do another stream. Definitely. I would love, 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 love to see uh, everyone's like progress photos and art like e either in the chat or just the Facebook group themselves like it would be so amazing to see it all I love seeing everyone's progress and it's just been really wholesome and nice and everyone is just amazing you know what we're gonna go fun we're gonna have some fun uh, it's gonna be cringe for me but you've seen my current style, you know what I do- what my art is right now. You wanna see Dubs' first reference sheet? It's way down there, but it exists. And man, is it cringe for me. So people who don't know me a whole lot, um, I used to draw solely with a mouse. Because, um... I did not have a- well, okay, I had a tablet. But I was so, so bad at, a uh, um, at drawing with a tablet. I couldn't, like, get the hand-eye coordination back in the day. I had, like, an old bamboo. And, uh, so... So we will start off with the nice, and I will show you the first, the current reference sheet of dubs. Um, we'll pull out that current reference sheet as soon as it loads. Just to kind of show you guys this fun, like, art- your art will progress if you guys continue. So this is Dubs' current ref. Bit symmetrical, had fun doing like some additives, like a front and back. A cute little chibi saying that the broken wing's not required. A view of how her tail looks and how to draw it. Butt feathers, because I love that shit. Um, ah, crap! No, Nimbus, that's another token in the uh, in the in the uh, swear jar. I've also uh, finally decided what my punishment is for every time I swear. I have to like eat now what six spicy um, chicken fries that we have in my household. They're really good, but they hurt me. <laughs> 
um, little front paws eye color and everything. Uh, I was doing so well. All right, here we go. This is Dubs's first ref. This is before I changed that S to a Z. And this is back whenever she was owned by the first owner. And... One token. Yeah, it's a total of five. Oh man. <laughs> Been added to the swear jar. Oh no, I ate five spicy nuggets. Spicy chicken fries. Oh boy. They're real good if you guys can buy them at Sam's, but oh do they hurt. So this was Dubs' first ref. Back... Gosh, I don't even know. How old is that? Six years. Dubs is six years old. And so we'll we'll go back. We will, you know, we'll go back in time. So there's that ref. Um, that's her first ref ever. Here is her next ref. Back with the Z. And you can see more, like, actual characteristics that you see now. Um, she's got the nose horns that was iconic for her of the day. The black and the white paws, which she still has to this day. But I think I flipped them. <laughs> um, the white and back tail feathers, the mane, the little chest with a little white spot. Um, her muzzle with the black eyes and the horns. I love ram horns. So there's that. Um, third ref she got. Right here is where we are. Copy image. And this is the ref I made after my friend who originally owned with her passed away. So again, I don't think anything changed out of this besides like the shape of like the uh the chest little thing. Chest marking. Um So that's the third ref. Here's the fourth. Oh wow, that was a huge canvas. It doesn't even fit all the way. Well, that's fine. All we need is at least this. So now you can see where I put in like those darker browns. I think I stuck with this version of Dubs for the longest. Little twirls there. There's a lot of art in her with that version. And then I think this is it with file, edit, paste, and then there's this one. This is pretty close to where she's at right now. I think literally the only thing that changes is this bit, the wing, and then the horns right here at the cheeks, they go away and get replaced as spots. But I have gone through so many reference sheets and changes throughout with this character. And it just takes time. This is six years of art and reference sheets and to come from, where is it, this to this is just something really nice and fun to kind of go back to. Gosh, this is still cringe. Bet we can all know where I got inspiration for this piece of artwork. Definitely not telephone. <laughs> Oh, uh, definitely not me watching those videos on YouTube. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I 
I understand that one. I, I don't know why. I just like to change their style. It just as they grow. And I think this is her complete. I think this is where I'm going to keep it. Because I've been the happiest with this. I like the, uh, I don't know, who that? No, no, not at all. Though the colors and like the color scheme and everything is to match the original horse that she was based off of, owned by the previous owner. But, um, yeah. This was a lot of fun. This was a very fun, fun reference sheet, and I wish I- I hope I can recover the, uh, um, what's it called? There's a word for this. The high resolution files, because I do not have those anymore. <laughs> Hopefully I will. Yes, definitely. We need to do that. I need to just do more art with friends and just people in general, which is my plan for this year. My plan for this year is just to do a bunch of just art and not not for money, because I really just don't want to do commissions anymore. I want to do it for free. So that's one thing I'm definitely going to strive for with... Uh, this year going on forward for probably forever. We will see. But yeah, this was fun. Hopefully three weeks time we can uh, do more of this. Yes. I, I mean, I can go older. Like, I have- I can send, send photos of sketchbooks from middle school back in my huge Naruto face and, uh, show you all that cringe, you know. Everyone in middle school has cringe art. Who's an artist? Hello, Zero. I know, you want my attention and love. That's all you want from me right now. But with that, I think we're gonna end the stream today. Um... We went through a lot of over stuff. I showed my old artwork and everything to show where you can advance to. We worked on expressions, eyes, um, went over how to draw duchies again with the full body and even managed to even shade it completely and do line art. Um, but yeah. Hopefully three weeks time, we should do more streaming and it'll be a lot of fun. Yes, the two streams will be saved, and then I will also be attempting to upload them on uh, YouTube. I almost said Facebook. Oh god, that's old. That's also old, and man, that brings up memories as well. Gosh. That was- I think I did that completely free, too. So, I want to do that again. I want to do art pieces like that again. Especially in my new style where I just completely free and have fun. So thank you all. I had a blast with all of you. Um, three weeks time, we'll do this again. And we can just focus on other species as well. And just learn how to draw from the ground up. I'm happy to teach and happy to just work with people and show everyone how I do things. And if what I've learned over the years will help others, it makes me even more happier. So, thank you all for joining, and I'll see you guys three weeks' time. Goodbye! <laughs>